our impact bar in our impact mill and it's slightly out of uh, balance and we're out here in the middle of nowhere and I'm like, how the hell am I going to figure out how this is balanced? And Andy told me to take it apart and bring it to him. He has a idea. Okay, so back in the day before they had computerized balancing machines and almost dynamic crap, we used to static balance everything. Dynamic crap. Dynamic crap. So all we have to do is hang this right from center line. Like gravity do its work. The heavy side's going to be low. So if we set up a marker, spin this, the side's low, the side's too heavy, so we're going to add some weight on this side until it spins flat, and then we know it's relatively in balance. See, we need to, uh, check this part put too much on. say it's way better. Go for it. See what happens? Yeah. All right. So that's um that is jungle balancing or bush balancing or when you don't have the right stuff you pull some grabastic stuff out of your ass and you make it work. Right? And I know all you balance guys out there are gonna give me shit because it's not dynamically balanced and you can have different oscillations of different RPMs and amplified degrees of this and that. You know what? We're out in the middle of the desert. <laughs> All right, so we're uh, we're gonna put this piece back in the impact mill. Um, and I'm gonna need Ryan's help here to hold it uh, in place so I can actually tighten it. All right, so the way this impact mill works is, as this spins around at about 3,500 RPM, the material drops down in the middle, comes flinging out the uh, end, and it impacts these bars that are welded in all the way around here. And uh, that's how the material breaks down, by impact, hence an impact mill. And that's why you see all this wear in here. The steel is wearing, because rock after rock after rock keeps coming out, and uh, eventually this all wears out, and we gotta buy a new one. And we are in desperate need of buying a new one, but we are, about 340 miles away from the manufacturer and our choices are to stop working today or figure out how to get this to work so we did some uh, some bush balancing and now we're here so now I got this in here I need Ryan's help because he's gonna wedge a piece of steel up in here to keep it from spinning so I can tighten the damn thing and right, go ahead and shove that baby in there ready There we go. All right, so we got the impeller rebuilt. We did all the modifications that we were we were working on. Thing runs great again. Um, this is the Keen G-Force Impact Rock Crusher. Um, when I bought this thing, we were warned over and over and over, don't run it a lot, it's just a hobbyist kind of a thing, whatever. We are running the crap out of this. It's got a Briggs & Stratton motor on it, totally bulletproof. Sure, it's got wear parts, but all rock crushers have wear parts. You just take care of it as it goes. It's running six hours. Um, we do this so much, we had to make some modifications. So, we've got a cool little brace right here. It holds our bucket at the right angle, so that the, the rock will feed in. And then we've got it mounted up on this frame here. And the frame's really cool because we can pull the bucket in and out with it running or when we shut it off so we don't have to lift the thing up every time. So we're getting tired. We do a lot of this stuff. So we just slide a bucket underneath, let all of the all of the crushed rock fall into the bucket, and it's awesome. Um, you can do field repairs on it. You can you can little weld things, little this and that to make it make it better. Again. We're out in the middle of the desert. We don't have an option of just running down and grabbing parts uh, that we don't have. But, um, you know, the little field repairs we do, the thing runs great. It's a good day. You know just who you are, you're